We are live. Thank you for joining myself and John Thompson. Um, my name is Eric B2 with Two Homes and Intero. I, my special guest today is, like I mentioned earlier, is John Thompson, one of the co-founders of Intero. Thank Good to see you, Eric. Joining us today. Uh, the topic for our talk today is a review of the first half of the year in the real the local real estate market and what we think will happen for the rest of this year and, and beyond. You got your crystal ball out, right? I do. We're going to ask the questions of the magic eight ball. Exactly. I, I think before, so we're going to run into some statistics, um, which I think everyone will be really interested in, but I think Maybe first we can just um, talk about an overview um, of the market of like the kind of the trends that, that we have seen and kind of the commentary about that. Um, so just starting things off, the, the story I would say for 2021 in Silicon Valley is the talk of this tech exodus of, of people just fleeing California and the Bay Area altogether. And um, I, I heard a lot of that narrative both locally and in the national press. And um, with my experience on the ground, um, I, I find that very challenging to understand or believe based on, on the customers that I've been working with and, and uh, what I see on a daily basis, right? Um, maybe you can comment on that as well. Yeah, I, I would agree, right? I mean, maybe it, it has been a little bit more exaggerated, like in the big city of San Francisco, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, downtown Oakland, you know, those are the big cities. But for our, you know, what's the definition of a big city in a suburb today? I mean, it, it's, it's uh, you know, we're almost one big city from San Francisco all the way down to Morgan Hill now. But yeah, I would agree with you. The um, you know, for the most part, the 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 old traditional what I would call suburbs, everything from South San Francisco all the way down the peninsula to Morgan Hill, <clears throat> has has seen a a strong real estate market in the first six months uh, of this year, stronger than you know than <laughs> than it's been probably in, since we came out of you know the financial crisis where where things really took off. It's been that strong. Yeah, and something that um, I've also in the news recently is a lot of companies, um, local companies have announced their their schedule for bringing employees back to the office. And I think a lot of it's gonna be hybrid, so it might not be full-time, but definitely um, multiple days per week um, in the office. And what we've seen as well is the traffic is back to pre-COVID level. So I'm kind of, yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've seen on the road. Like all the traffic is back. You know, some of some of what happened, Eric, which was interesting, right, is it, it fueled the real estate market to, you know, the nth degree because more and more people valued their home more than ever because they were spending more time at it. So it didn't matter where you were at, like you, you there was a lot of move ups, right? If you were in a small two bedroom, one bath home, you were trying to get into a three bedroom, two bath and the three bedroom, two bath home, were trying to get into the five bedroom, three bath and the five bedroom, three bath people were maybe trying to get some more land. So it, it, you know, it, it created a, a demand for housing like we've never seen because everybody valued their home more than ever the last 14 months. Exactly, that's a great point because everyone, including myself, spent so much more time at home, right? Whereas we'd be spending maybe the majority of our time in the office, now we're spending all that time at home. So um, space for, your, for yourself and your pets and your kids to run around in and, and pools and, and things have just been so important. And so you're right, I've had many, many, many uh, move up clients. And in, in certain cases, um, they kept their old house. In other cases, they had to sell their old house. So um, as we jump into the stats, we'll see that uh, play out in that the single family market has been um, extraordinary. I, I don't think I've seen the rate of appreciation or the acceleration that I've ever seen before. And yeah. surprisingly as well, the condo townhouse market didn't 
um, decline. It just it didn't accelerate as fast. Right, um, right. And we saw for me, uh, you know, just uh, uh, another comment. We saw a the outlying areas uh, increase the in demand, you know, a lot more. Meaning, it was since people weren't having to drive every day maybe only once or twice a week, or maybe not at all, people were more willing to move to the outskirts, uh, move a little bit further away to get more land, more house, you know, because they're staying in their house more. So those peripheral cities even also saw a, a huge demand because without people being on the road, traveling into the office as much, it made their that location that previously would have been negative for its commute time, not as negative. Yeah, like I, I had clients that were uh, in Cupertino and, and two, two sets of families moved to Dublin um, to have much larger, larger houses, newer houses, larger backyards for um, significantly better um, price per square foot and, and uh, more reasonable right. price. Yep. Saw so a lot of that. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's jump in. Um, in, into some into some data. So this is um, Santa Clara County and we'll run through some of the local counties and also um, specific cities as well. And if, if anyone has any specific um, stats they'd like to see, um, you can reach out to, to me or, or John or um, put it in the chat as well. So this is just a quick look at the median sales price um, for, for Santa Clara County from um, June, of last last year to June of this year, so it's it's seen quite a dramatic um, increase, right? So, um, as of uh, June 2020, the median sales price of a single family um, house let's let's define that as single family. Let's make sure we get single family. So, the median the median sales price of a single family house in Santa Clara County of, of June of last year was 1.37 million. And for, for this year's 1.73. So that is a increase of 26% in, in, in one year um, for, for, for single families. Um, I, I don't expect, so thinking about the future, I do not expect that rate of increase to continue, um, but that's, Kind of what we were talking about with people looking for more space, right? And that really fueled this. It did. It fueled it faster than normal. And you know, let's hope it doesn't go twenty six percent. I mean, that that those kind of numbers, you know, are 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 hard to keep up with, right? I I don't know an elevator that only goes up that fast, right? Eventually, it's got to come back down and pick up. You run out of passengers. Right, if it's doing that, right, and so it's gotta, it's gotta come down a, a, again a little bit, and you know, a healthy appreciation rate between four and ten percent is what I like to see. But yeah, I mean, you're always gonna see these blips, and uh, boy, we saw one in the last uh, last 12, 14 months for sure. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's worth making sure everyone understands the difference between median and average sales price, right? I mean, and why that's used versus another, they're, they're, they're both, you know, good statistics, <clears throat> but making sure, you know, one reason why I like the median, which is what you're using here, Eric, is because occasionally, right, one month you might get, you know, this $30 million mansion to sell, right? And, and that really skews an average because that throws in with all the numbers. The median, price kind of takes that out and it's just like what's the home right smack dab in the middle or an equal number of homes above it an equal number of homes below it sold that's the median and i think it's a little more stable consistent number the average sometimes can uh, can be skewed when uh you know when a few really low or a few really high priced homes sell yeah and so let's let's jump to the next local county so this is san mateo county so we had a $2 million median sales price um, from, from last month to last year's 1.73. So that's, a, that's an increase of 15.5%. Of um, and we can even see that June was slightly higher too. 
Um, so July was a little bit less, but still um, significantly more than, uh, than last semester, right? So it's actually, yeah, 1.6 to, to, um, to 2 million. So that's uh, quite, also quite an increase. So let's, let's jump to the next. So we'll actually look at San Francisco, which um, there was all this doom and gloom news about San Francisco, but single family house prices in San Francisco appreciated quite tremendously as well. So just like the story we've been talking about people looking for more space, even in the city, right? So people with smaller places were looking for more space as well. So even though you hear about the demise of, of the large cities, well, you can just see from the data, right? So June to June, 1.6 for single family in San Francisco to 1.95, right? So that's that's uh, something to to consider that um, it still went up 20, almost 22 percent. Yeah, I mean, this is what what's good to look at numbers, right? You know, because they're just the facts. You know, the media might put a different spin on things um then uh then what the numbers are there's no story here it's just the facts here's here here here's what actually happened in, in our pricing in in all these different locations so so this is a good story to tell too and we're going to run back the three counties and this is days on market so how long it took to sell so um as of june of 2020 in san francisco for single families it was 12 days was the median days on market. And it actually creeped up um, towards the, the end of the year of last year, up to 18 days. And as you can see, um, it, it started dropping um, down to 10, 11 days. And so 11 days on market is, is extremely low, right? Um, in terms of um, the day from the day it goes on the market, the day it's sold. And this is the median. So, so plenty of houses sold in single digit number of days. And, and there are some that took a little bit longer, but like, I think um, numbers I've heard for national averages, like pre-COVID, it's like 30 days in some markets for, for um, medium days on market. So this is like a third of that for San Francisco. So let's jump to um, San Mateo County days on market. Um, so it's it's been pretty steady as you can see here. So 11 and now it's been eight for the, for the past. And I think Santa Clara County tells a similar story about how competitive it is. So if, if you have any friends or family that have been trying to buy a house um, during the past year, they, they can tell you all about how fast houses sell. So this is the median again, it's been single digits for over a year um, on, on days on market. So something, the next thing that I want to discuss, let's quickly actually go to um, Alameda County, right? So the East Bay for seeing those, those same two things, the, the median days on market, as well as the um, median sales prices. So Alameda County, same story, the whole Bay area, um, the housing market has been, it's been extremely competitive and houses are selling extremely fast. Um, let's look at the, um, Let's look at the median sales price for San Mateo County. And even, uh, even outside of COVID, right? We've always been a quicker pace to the Bay Area, right? Yeah. I mean, I talk to owners of real estate uh, companies uh, and managers all across the country, and so many of them are, are baffled by how quickly, even in a slow market for Silicon Valley in the Bay Area, that's still usually a fast market for many areas of the country. Exactly. Yeah, so we, we can see here for, for, for Alameda County, East Bay, the, the price increase is almost 28%, 27.9% in the last year, right? So that trumps all, all four of the Bay Area counties, right, in terms of the appreciation, right? So you see a million, just over a million dollars, and now we're at um, almost 1.3 million for the median sales price. So it, the data kind of shows the story that, that John and I were mentioning at the beginning in that um, we had a lot of people looking for more space uh, um, and, and that caused, and with limited inventory, that, that just caused us this tremendous increase in, uh, in home prices. Um, the, the other thing that, that's interesting to note too is to look at the, 
at the condos townhouse market as well. So we're going to run through the the four counties on that as well. And so we can see here that there wasn't there was appreciation. Um, it it wasn't as much as as the single family, um, but it 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 definitely still increased. So we went from seven from 660 to 731 for Alameda County, which is which is a 10.7% increase, which I would say is extremely healthy. And, and me personally, as a real estate investor, I would be happy with high single digit um, appreciation per year, right? Like I, if you told me, hey, you could buy real estate and get 9% appreciation, I would just hand you my cash. Wonderful. Yeah, that, that, that would be amazing, right? Yeah. Compounded, compounded over time and with, with the leverage of having a mortgage on it as well, where you only have to put down for an investment property, 25% in some cases is, is just the, the actual return on cash is, would be even higher, right? Because 9% is on the overall price, right? And, if, and one thing I was going to mention also, Eric, um, you know, you know, if, if your, your clients and people watching this video are, are looking at all, you know, the national broadcasts and the national news, for me, uh, you know, I've been, been in real estate for 35 years and a lot of things affect these numbers that we're talking about, right? The stock market, interest rates, jobs, what's happening in the world, right? Is there unrest in the world? You know, um, all of these different things affect um, how fast real estate moves and at what price. But for me, in, in, uh, in observing this market here in the Bay Area for 35 years, the number one driver above everything over interest rates, over the stock market is the job market. And, and, and even though we had a struggle in the job market a lot, a lot throughout the country in the last 14 months due to COVID, we didn't see that right here because we're so tech-based. Very few tech companies had layoffs because of COVID. I mean, you know, the, very, very few, right? I mean, the Apples, the Amazons, the Googles, the, I mean, the, the Facebooks, I mean, they all actually probably grew their business over the last 14 months. So again, to me, it just justified even that much more as that if you wanted to really try and, you know, put your finger on values and pricing and trends for real estate in at least here in the Bay Area, you know, follow the job market. When people, when the job market's strong, when people are comfortable in employment and doing well, and, and that also then includes stock options around here, um, it, it just follows that the real estate market stays strong. Exactly. So that's another topic we can delve into on another on another webinar is the is the commercial market, right? So just briefly to touch on that. Um, Google during COVID got full approval for their downtown um, campus near um, Dryden Station. And so um, if, if you look at all the real estate trans commercial real estate transactions during COVID, everything has been selling at record sales prices, right? Um, it, it hasn't slowed down a single bit. So all this talk of remote work, um, companies leaving Silicon Valley, um, hundreds of millions of dollars has been invested in the Silicon Valley commercial real estate market for companies. So I think what has happened and what we've seen even before COVID is that we just don't have enough space here for employees and for housing. And so companies have just had to, they were forced to hire outside. So you have, you have places like Austin, right? Oregon, um, Colorado. And it's just because they're just physically, we're running out of space. And so, um, that's that's why um, companies they would have loved to have more people here, and they're still actually adding more people here because we're still having large projects um, um, in construction. So Facebook has a large campus that they're building um, near their headquarters, and, and Google just got approval, and Apple's actually has a North San Jose um, campus that they're working on as well. So the John is right in that you have to look at the leading indicator of the job market here, which. Um, I, I know um, from, from um, clients that work at Facebook, they've added significant headcount during COVID. They've hired many, many people. So some of them have been remote, but also many of them have been for 
for Menlo Park as well. So it's a, it's they're growing so much that they can't put everyone into HQ. It's just not possible. And so they're yeah. they're adding as many as they can, um, and and that's kind of we see that reflected in the housing market. Yeah. And so this um, this is the the condo townhouse market for Santa Clara County, and it's very similar to Alameda County with about 11.6 percent appreciation um, during the past year. And I'll run through the last two, which would be San Mateo and um, San Francisco as well. So this is San Mateo now, the median prices for the last year. So San Mateo um, actually is, is almost flat, right? So we went from um, 944, uh, 944,000 of, of last year to 950,000 um, of this year. And the comment I would have on that is San Mateo, um, one of the strong, strong advantages of San Mateo is the location being close to companies. And so, and so the um, condos and townhouses, um, a lot of those people have, have moved to single family houses, right, during COVID. And so the, the demand has not been as high. And so that's where we can see that, that it's, it's pretty um, stable. And what I would say is that's a good opportunity. If you're looking for somewhere to, to invest, I would consider San Mateo condos and townhouses as they have not had the, the growth and I think as things start opening up and people start coming back to work and they're sitting in two hours of traffic, they'll be much more open to having a condo and townhouse, you know, five minutes away from work. Just like anything, right? If we all had um, enough courage, the best time to have bought a condo would have been, you know, in the summertime of last year, right? In the middle of all the uncertainty. Because that was probably, if anything, that was the market that, that uh, you know didn't see the strength that all the other markets had, but but here's one thing I know: people forget quickly, and they move on, and they're they're you know this is going to change and and go. And if boy, if you had the courage to buy condos in those markets last summer, you're going to see a, a a nice steady appreciation over the next few years, I think, based on where you bought it, because it's hard to buy on a downswing in yep. the Silicon Valley because there's so few downswings. Exactly. And, and everyone that said, hey, I want to know when the market goes down, I'm ready to buy. That was your chance because the condo market did decrease. And right. it was crickets for, for my clients that were that were having all that talk of, hey, I want to buy I know. when the, the market goes down. And actually, for the first month of COVID, things did pause for a second. And so if you were ready to pull the trigger and buy a house um, during the first month of shelter in place, you would have got an amazing, amazing deal. But of course, um, everyone thinks, you know, hindsight being 2020 that they can predict. Um, and, and I still hear a lot of commentary too that um, we're due for, for a correction in, in the real estate market. And so we'll briefly touch on that. And I think um, it will happen. Like the, the, I don't think the real estate market, especially the Silicon Valley Bay Area market, can continue to go up um, forever. But um, I think the, the the correction will be quite small because um, the amount of equity people have in their homes now is so high. So, like the financial crisis, people had very little equity. Not people, the people that were forced to sell had very little equity in their homes, and so it was a cascading effect, snowball effect of the market just crumbling down. I think now, um, when it does soften. Um, people will be able to sell and still walk away with huge gains if they can't afford to, to pay the mortgage. Because the uh, even in just the last year, the appreciation has been so tremendous that um, I, I don't think there's going to be a significant correction, maybe a small pause. What's your thought, John? You know, yeah, it's, look, it's so hard to, you know, even you and I who are in this every day, stockbrokers. It's like to ask a stockbroker to know like, all right, when is, when can I buy a certain stock in here when it's at its bottom, right? And, you know, that's just all speculative, right? We can all guess, you know, the smart thing, especially when it comes to real estate is, you know, look, you know, making sure that it's the right investment in your portfolio, whether it's your own single family home or an investment, property and then making sure that the the monthly payment on it 
is comfortable with you. And then you wait. It's like, there's an old saying, right? It's a corny one, but you know, you know, don't wait to buy real estate in Silicon Valley, buy real estate and wait. And, and so, you know, yes, it's going to have its ups and downs. Yes. It's going to come down again. I don't know when I, I you know, but it's going to have its one thing I know the, the, the downtrends in Silicon Valley are pretty short lived. Like you mentioned, they make adjustments, they go down. And then as long as you're, as long as you can afford the monthly payment, that's what I, I said earlier, right? Don't, don't look at the the value of the property as much as, cause that can go up and down as it goes, you know, through time. But one thing stays steady is that payment, right? And if that is something that you're comfortable with and isn't gonna stress you out, don't worry about the value as it, as it you know, rolls up and down over the next five, 10, 15 years. It, it's just something that it's, it's not, it, it's something you, 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 you sit on and you wait, unless you're, you know, a builder or a speculator or a flipper, whole different conversation, right? And that's, I don't think what this conversation is about. Um, but, you know, that, that, that's my, uh, my best advice is, you know, don't, don't worry about that. If you can afford the monthly payment, the value is going to go up and down over the next 10 years, you know, and if you're not selling, it doesn't matter. Just ride through it you know, let it go, right? If you didn't panic, if you owned a condo, you know, in certain markets last summer and didn't panic, right? It, it's, it slipped down. And now we're already seeing them come back on the rise as people are coming back to work. This, this is San Francisco, right? So this is condos and townhouses in San Francisco. So we're back, we're back at even. And so it did drop down to the median price of a condo and townhouse in, in San Francisco, now we're back already. Exactly, so, right? It's so already, if it's already back. <laughs> so if you panicked in that, you know, in that mid range of that graph, yeah, you know, because you were worried about the top end and saying, no, well, I can afford this. I can ride ride this out. I, I can afford this monthly payment. Okay, then you know you've you've come out a winner. You know, just by riding it out. I mean, that's what the owner of our company does, Warren Buffett. Right? He doesn't panic. He tries to buy on the dips and sell on the highs and doesn't, you know, doesn't panic when everyone else is selling. That's when he's buying. buying and exactly. He's buying, he's selling. Yeah. And I, I think uh, the other the other thing to consider about um, the market right now as well is that the interest rates are extremely attractive. And so if you're thinking about buying um, a house for your, your primary residence, um, what um, what might What's, what my friend has said many times is that you fix your biggest cost, right? So if you, get, if you buy a house um, and, and you get a, a mortgage, then you, you fix that, that cost for the foreseeable future. Whereas if you're, if you're renting, um, the, they can increase your rent and rents, have, especially for single families have gone up significantly. Um, and they can, you won't have any security either in terms of knowing where you're living. And so if you're able to buy a house to live in, and then on the investment side as well, the interest rates are just so low right now that I, that's something that I would say is I don't think the interest rates can stay this low, especially with um, um, inflation the, the way it is. And so having money in, this, in, in real estate is also another reason to talk about stocks versus real estate for investing is real estate is significantly less volatile. So it's, it's, a, it's a physical asset and it is significantly less volatile compared to the stock market, which can go have huge swings on a daily, weekly basis, whereas the, the house is pretty stable. Look, look at how much it swung in the last 48 hours, right? Yeah. Everyone was panicked about COVID two days ago. Yeah. And sold, right? Market went down a thousand points. Yeah. Wait, maybe the market's not that bad. And boom, like two days, everyone's back in, all, you know, I mean, yeah, it's extremely volatile and real estate is a lot more slow moving. Yeah, and it's it's also good diversification too. So if you have all of your assets in the stock market, which a lot of my clients with tech companies and and their and their um, stock options, then a significant portion of their of their assets are tied to not even just the stock market to one specific company. Um, diversifying that um, into real estate is a could be a wise choice to to have uh, some yeah, more absolutely stability. right. You know, little stocks, little bonds, little real estate, little cash. I mean, yeah. like smart, 
the smart plan is is to try and have a a you know a um, you know eggs in all those baskets. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that wraps up um, our our talk for today. Um, if anyone wants to see more specific stats or has questions for John or myself, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, thank you again, John. Um, appreciate your time. Thanks for having me on, Eric. Appreciate it. All right. Adios. Uh -huh.